Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games and talk game design, and we're still here with Eric Bloomquist. The gun thing? Oh. I feel like that's usually an outro thing, but I do do during the intro. I'm glad the finger guns are becoming a thing. Yeah, I like it. I, uh, I, I mean, I feel like legitimately good about myself when it happens. Right, that's why I, I can't stop. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, am I a cool guy it's, now? Yeah, it's an, it's an addiction for sure. <laughs> that's, that's why American Westerns were a thing. Because <laughs> they wanted to feel cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a moment of pride though the other day. One of our, our uh, really good fans, um, he uh, he's picked up on some of our behaviors, and uh, <laughs> so we I think we're talking about a game jam at some point. And I was like, uh, we, this was during window frame, and I was like, man, I don't remember what the theme of the jam was. And he commented, he was like, oh man, I'm so upset that Chris didn't take the opportunity to say that that was of the boom variety, because I have a tendency of saying boom boom jams. jams. (laughs) I was like, wow, man, you dug deep to, uh, to see my, my like mannerisms being I mean, to be fair, we actually have talked about the fact that me and Tony have had an episode where we've talked about the fact that you say that. That's, that's very true. You've made fun of me. Yes. Well, I will take every opportunity. But with that said, now I know what our theme will be when we finally do an Infinity Jam for the public. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering right now, we're trying to get the materials that we need to build a bridge. Yes. Because, you know, the bridge was missing planks. It's part of the adventure. And that's that's a big first lore object yeah. that yeah. you've seen. Yeah, sorry, I just kind of like passed over that. But this that's guy. that's Ami. 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 The warrior. Do you want to talk about the voice act, lack of voice acting thing? I, I actually, I was going to mention that because on the Kickstarter, that was one of the things that, was. that you were saying that you would probably use the money for. But I am curious why. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the biggest reason why we didn't, uh, well, there's two. There's two major reasons. Um, one, with uh, <laughs> doing voice acting right, would have been very costly. Like, no joke. way more costly than we anticipated. Because originally we were like, you know, we we thought it was gonna be this this small thing, and it was gonna be like maybe an hour and a half long, and it mm-hmm. was gonna be very simple. Um, and my me and my team were quite ambitious, and we worked on this thing. Up obsessively like yeah I was, like all, basically all i did um and so when it came time to do the voice acting was like man if we don't do this well it will ruin what we've built it, <laughs> if youtube yeah. has taught me anything yes audio quality and like even even like i don't know quality of like your personality and your voice makes or breaks yes absolutely. everything that includes audio so it's like it, it, what if we did all the, you know, it, what if it ruins the moments and ruins, you know, this and that. Like, I don't want to see loved your game, but the voice acting was really subpar or whatever. <laughs> you know, it'd be like, uh, mm-hmm. and the amount of work, you know, there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of dialogue. So like, that would have been a, a huge undertaking. Um, and here's, but here's why I'm okay with it. So for the longest time, I was kind of bummed about it. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, I love, I love the idea of, the player being able to decide what they sound mm. like. It's like reading a book. Yep. It's 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 a lot of that's that's part of the the argument that a lot of people will say that why a book is better than watching a movie or anything like that. It's because they want to be able to imagine. Yes. And that, actually that's the one of the biggest things that I focus on in this when I make this. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that he just slams it. <laughs> oh, so good. I had a lot of fun making these animations by the way. Especially, actually, I did his, when he freaks out, I did that animation twice. Really? So the first time I did it, he would fl- he used to fly up in the air and get his horn stuck in the ground, and then his feet were like bicycle kicking. <laughs> and I Very, don't, like, classic cartoony. Yeah, and, and uh, I was convinced by the team that they were like, you, you know, they're like, oh, I think it'd be better if you did it, like, differently, and I was, like, really stubborn about it. I was like, whatever, guys, it's fine, <laughs> you know? And then eventually I, I, I secretly did it without telling them. I just knocked it out in a day. And I was like, all right, guys, here you go. Here's your better animation. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, see, we told you. You know. Uh... Oh, animating all the bouncing jandals was a ton of fun, too. <laughs> could, that could have been like a Kickstarter like, <laughs> uh, thing. Been like, oh, if you back the project, then you'll get the original animation of him, him getting stuck his, with his horns in the ground. <laughs> we actually have five characters in this game that were... 
um, designed, not designed by the Kickstarter backers, but they were like alongside. Oh, like, like oh, that's pretty I'm, cool. I'm actually like, really co-designed. curious. So this, it's this a very popular reward, uh, and for especially for indie games and Kickstarter. But can you talk at all about like what that was like? It's amazing. Yeah. Because it. Okay, so, um, you know, we give them parameters. We're like, you're gonna be this character, right? And then they're, they, I want you tell me what character, it, like, uh, aesthetics you want that character to look like, hmm. and tell me what type of personality you want, and then I'll make that character for you. Huh. And then ah. I would send that. I would send them sketches, and you know, it would. I did actually a couple of them on stream on Twitch with them on the stream with me, and then they would sort of work with me and be like, really oh, awesome. I like this, I like that. So Charles, one of them, the Jandal handler, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, my friend Charlie, uh, so that's why he's Charles. Um, let's see, the Wanderer, who comes mm-hmm. later in the game, who we saw a little, a little bit of, that was the only one that I did not design. Huh. Oh, wow. The backer is was an artist, and he actually designed that character. Wow. Well, well done, because I love that Well, character. I mean, I gave him I gave him some direction and made mm-hmm. sure that it fit, because I, I mean, I redrew the character to fit the style, mm-hmm. but it was his, it was, he did a really kick-ass job with it. That's awesome. That's really cool. I, I feel like that's kind of a fun way to kind of make some of your characters feel a little more organic in the world, too. Yes. Because it's not just, like, one mind creating all these characters. Yep. Which that's, is how it had huh. been. I think that's also pretty important because you said that you it was important that each character had their own personality and you got to see their perspective as well. Mm-hmm. So the fact yes. that there were also multiple minds working on each one of those characters is very important. And, the, and adds to adds to how how you you as a player get to view them. It was I, I almost wanted to do another Kickstarter just to go through that process again of, of working <laughs> with the community because that was that was one of the best parts, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, the, and from what I've heard of uh, Kickstarter is, I feel like it's, everyone says that, right, that a Kickstarter campaign is a lot of work, um, but I feel like it's also a really interesting way to kind of like, for lack of better words, kind of kickstart a community around your yes, game. Yes, absolutely. Because people look at Kickstarter for new projects. Oh, yeah. It's it's a, it's a great marketing tool. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. I mean, it's. I, I'm just as guilty of it as is one like wanting to see what's going to be new out there and stuff like that. And and whenever and and being like tweets and stuff like that that connect to a Kickstarter. That's how I find most of the games that I get really obsessed about. Yep. Um, because then you get to be a part of the the development process. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I, if I mean me personally, when when I go through a Kickstarter, the first thing I look for is beta testing. <laughs> Every single time I'm like, is beta testing an option? Is it part of there? What, do I have to pay double the money of the game to get in a beta so I could just experience it early and be part of that? Yes, I'm in. That's that's li- that's every time. This is my favorite music in the game, by the way. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I love this track. Ever so slightly. I mean, I, I really just like the overworld, but... um. That's another one of my favorites. I mean, I, I think the music paired with like that background scenery is is really nice. Oh yeah, the we music. call the scene the clearing because mm. ah. it's sort of like the clearing after you know the the forest. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it was actually originally going to be part of the forest, like it was going to blend into it, but we decided to make it a its its own scene in itself, so it would have it its own feel. It does, and it gives you that that feeling of actually being separated from from the thing that you just went through because if you I feel like Chris just breezed through it but if you didn't and you spent a lot of time rummaging through the forest you may at some point be like I'm so I just I I like the forest but I'm done with the forest I want to be past the forest and the first thing that you get out is just this huge clearing Mm yep by the way giant tree house with the lift and everything digging it (laughs) this guy is probably my favorite (gasps) wait okay okay so this is my first theory is he the one in the the outhouse? Damn it! I was like, how perfect would it be for the guy that was banished to sneak in just to use the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm not very good with colors though, so I I have to just guess wildly. Oh, wait. So Johu is is one of my favorite characters though. I think he's both hilarious, but also like so logical. Where I'm like, yeah, dude, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> He, he was a difficult character because it was like, here's a situation for us to, you know, off camera we were talking about um, exposition fatigue mm-hmm. okay. and how difficult it is to balance 
Um, I think Bethesda makes a huge... It's like one of their big issues is like all their characters are always spouting exposition and not necessarily <laughs> like, like I when I when I play one of their games I want to know what it's like to live in that world and I never get that sense mm. like who are you why are you here and what is it like to be here and like I want it's always like hi I'm this I'm part of this thing now help us do that you know it's how it is every time you talk to one of those characters yeah. and, they're just uh, kind of like a centerpiece of information yes yeah and that that bugs me so much. Um, so that was something that I tried to be really conscious of. I love the fact that he used the word gumption. <laughs> I, love, I love that word. I don't know why. <laughs> so the other characters that were Kickstarter uh, backers, both the um, uh, the gardeners, mm-hmm. but they're a, they're a um, husband and wife combo, so I made mm. them both. I thought it was appropriate. That's pretty, That's awesome. pretty fair. Uh, Luna, the caretaker of the temple. Mm-hmm. So that was the most challenging one because she was like, I want it to be like yes. an anime <laughs> cat girl. So that was my direction. Hmm. So that's what I, I went nuts with it. That's I mean, to be fair, you have a world already filled with people with right. empty ears and monkey tails. So really, it's not <laughs> too, it wasn't out of bounds. Oh, yeah, by the way, never, never making another character in Song 7 with tails. I don't want to animate any more tails. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You know how many tails I've animated? Especially because, like, there's probably... I mean, how many joints do you have in those tails? Six. Yeah, dude, that's a nightmare. I know. <laughs> I, for for Fishlap, I'm animating a skeleton that has, like, at least two joints per limb. And I'm just like, even that's enough for me, man. I'm like... It's, it's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. It but, is uh, a lot. I'm actually thinking for Chapter 2, because he's kind of a... He's going to be a fish out of water, even more so now, that I'm going to have him do uh, DBZ <laughs> style... Wrap the. Uh, sorry. Right, yeah. Wrap <laughs> You'll the, find out why that's funny later. Oh, man. Wrap the tail around his waist and kind of hide it. <laughs> but it'll be a narrative thing. And also because I don't want to animate tails anymore. Well, you can always just <laughs> cut off the tail and then he'll never grow into a terrifying monster. You don't ever have to worry about it. Actually, Dragon Ball is a huge inspiration for me. I don't know if you can tell, especially with Contra. He was oh. definitely oh, yeah, that makes uh, a lot of sense. inspired by Boo. I could see that. But we'll probably find out who Contra is. <laughs> oh, we haven't seen him episode yet. Episode <laughs> on the next episode. So until then, you're the question of the day this time. Question of the day? Okay. Yep. Um, I think. I think it's you. It's you now. I mean, we're what really we not taking about? turns. Talked a lot about Kickstarter, actually. Huh. Um, I guess... Hmm. It's hard to say because I don't know if you guys have done Kickstarters. It's like I, I kind of want to talk about like the. Okay, here's one. Um, what do you, what are you as uh, gamers want to see from future Ooh. Kickstarter projects? You know, we I feel like there's a little bit of a Kickstarter fatigue. Mm-hmm. You know, people. I mean, there yeah. there have been a lot of successful ones, but there have been ones that have been in, unsuccessful. Like, what is the thing for you that that hooks you and makes you feel like, yeah, this is something I really want to support? Hmm. All right. Yeah. No, that's that's a good one. Kapow. Thank you for watching, everyone. Kicking you off the show, putting this guy on. I'll just be the editor. I mean, <laughs> these guys won't miss me. <laughs> no, but who's going to, like, lead the the kapow? Oh, and the booms. Sh- and the booms. The finger guns will be my legacy. Like, you pop in. <laughs> like, yeah. Just like, like the green <laughs> screen. Just, <laughs> Dude, we could uh, do so much with this green screen. We really could. I'm seeing the potential now. We're going to go now. <laughs> See you guys next. Bye, everyone. Bye.